we will talk about the return migration, especially the returns that followed 2008-9 economic crisis here in Britain. Uh, I will show you a little bit of statistics uh, that were behind the reasons of uh, people's migration back to Poland. Uh, also, uh, we will talk about the strategies and plans of those who returned uh, after 2008. And then we will talk about uh, we will talk about Brexit and how Brexit affects the uh, post enlargement migrants uh, here in Britain and how it affects their decisions. Um, so let's start with the reasons behind this uh, post two thousand eight return migration. As, as you can see at this chart, uh, people were returning uh, for a set of different reasons. And uh, here on the on the right, you have percents. Uh, obviously, they, they do not sum up to 100%. Any guess why? Because it was a multiple choice uh, questionnaire. So people were allowed to give more than one answer. Uh, and to look at those who, who prevail, who are who predominate, uh, migration was always planned as a temporal one uh, for those who, who didn't see themselves as, as, as permanent migrants here in Britain or future uh, UK citizens. Uh, people uh, had plans of, of, of uh, continuing their studies back in Poland. That was the reason behind the, the return. Sufficient savings for hamsters who had enough to uh, to, uh, com to 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 re to to do what they wanted to do back in Poland, or uh, either get married, set a business, buy a property, or just pay back their debts. Uh, uh, the work in in Britain was just seasonal one. That's a reason for the returns of the storks. Family, friends in Poland, and homesickness. Um, uh, when it comes to when it comes to the uh, the the people who who returned to Poland following two thousand eight crisis, um, uh, many of them after 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 this return were not sure whether they should stay or should they should go go back or migrate somewhere else. And uh, these are uh, different surveys uh, carried out uh, either for uh, for the whole uh, uh, for whole Poland as the case of the uh, fourth and fifth uh, uh, research presented here on the chart or just for regions. Uh, Silesia, Malop Malopolska, Lower Silesia, those are regions of Poland. Uh, but as you can say, uh, as you can see at this, this chart, uh, we have declarations of people who, who wanted to stay, were unsure, or uh, were planning to migrate again. As you can see, the, the results of these servers differ. As I said, it's difficult to measure migration. It's difficult to reach, uh, it's also difficult to reach a return migrants. Uh, and um, uh, it's 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 also uh, risky to, uh, to, to 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 that's why it's difficult to and or risky to generalize the results of such surveys for the whole population of returned migrants in a given country, let's say Poland. But uh, as 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 we can assume. Uh, Half of return migrants were planning were were planning to stay back in Poland, and the other half had plans to migrate again, often uh, to uh, to uh, return to Britain because for many after a couple of years in Britain that would, this this new migration uh, would be a return. In migration studies, a migration undertaken after a return, we call it remigration. Um, 
So let's consider, uh, let's think if this uh, returns uh, following 2008 crisis uh, was a return migration. It's also important to underline that many of the people who returned, many of uh, post-enlargement migrants who returned to Poland, not necessarily lost their jobs uh, or were by, badly hit by crisis. Many of them, they had this un intentional unpredictability and they thought that maybe a return would be a good strategy um, because of homesickness because of family and friends in Poland so so they were uh, so they were returning to Poland uh, but also uh, with this plan of not making plans of intentional unpredictability uh, sometimes they were coming to uh, to Poland uh, with uh, with this uh, objective with this aim of of, of going back to Britain uh, in case uh, the things wouldn't go uh, as well as they wished. So the return about uh, return migration, the, sorry, the research about return migration uh, show that uh, especially people who are unemployed back in Poland uh, considered uh, re-migration. Uh, remigration either to Britain or to another uh, Western country. Uh, so uh, the researchers who the researchers here the research of Alexandra Galasinska once again uh, uh, within the uh, theoretical and methodological framework of critical discourse analysis. Uh, those who were unemployed back in Poland uh, adopted the strategies of wait and see especially of searchers if you remind if you remember this uh, ty type of uh, uh, of migrants in britain uh, if you remember ho uh, hamsters storks salmons and searchers um so searchers uh, uh, those who uh, who who who, who uh, were intentionally uh, unpredictable. Uh, they were that they they were uh, looking to wait and see, uh, and uh, didn't uh, discard uh, re-emigration. Um, uh, uh, Grabowska, Lusinska, and Okolski say that uh, for some uh, for some returnees, uh, return was intentionally completed. And uh, here uh, you can uh, we can we can talk about hamsters. That all, those are people who are able to save enough money to do something that they were planning to do back in Poland, or storks who go back and forth, or who just went to Britain for a couple of seasons to work in uh, either uh, hospitality uh, or um, or agriculture and and went back to Poland also economic migrants but as searchers um, for searchers again the return war it was intentionally unpredicted uh, Fihel and Grabowska Lusinska say about liquid return once again liquid return something that uh, that uh, is seen as a return something that is seen as a uh, let's say a resettlement back in the country of origin but uh, in uh, the minds of many not necessarily a definite return uh, a return that if things don't go as well as we, we, we would plan they would uh, it can uh, it can either lead to uh, remigration, and finally, Anne White says about something that she calls double return, and here I would like to uh, define it. Uh, mm, interesting concept because definitely it names something that was often observed among the people who migrated. Uh, who, reming, who, ret, uh, who returned? Sorry, who returned to Poland uh, after two thousand eight? Anne White uh, defines double return uh, as follows. Uh, she she writes: Migrants return to their countries of origin, but they change opinion and return. This time to settle down abroad. A lot of migrants go to Poland only in order to migrate again. Why? You find out and let me know. Please see assignment week 9 individual work part A, causes of double return. 
I explain what I would like you to do for this assignment in the next video, part number five. As promised, in this part, I would like to also to say about, uh, about Brexit, uh, about the possible post-Brexit return and immobility. As you all know, uh, in 2016, uh, Britain voted to leave the European Union. And as you possibly remember, the post-enlargement migration was one of the important topics in the Brexit referendum debate. This is something that I would like you to discuss with your colleagues and that will be uh, the other assignment that I leave for you. Don't worry, there are just two assignments. So, um, uh, so 2016 is not only the year of Brexit referendum, it's also the year when the number of Polish migrants is the highest historically. After the Brexit referendum, the number of Polish migrants falls down. Uh, from this 1 million, you can go back the slide to uh, 900,000. So, uh, indeed, Polish migrants, uh, the, 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 um, the net migration for Polish uh, citizens in Britain is, is minus. Uh, that means that, the, that there is more uh, Polish uh, migrants who decide to return than Polish migrants who go to Britain uh, currently. Uh, but these statistics are not uh, true for all the uh, national groups of uh, EU migrants. Uh, sometimes this, uh, this net migration is positive. So, uh, what will happen uh, after Brexit? We already uh, know a couple of things, although uh, not everything is certain before the end of the transition period. As you already know, as all of you know, uh, Brexit has finally left the European Union on the 31st of January 2020. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the freedom of movement, uh, movement uh, ceased, that the freedom of movement uh, ended. Sorry, uh, the uh, freedom of movement will end after the end of the transition period uh, that currently uh, is planned for uh, 31st of December 2020. But this period may be extended given the exceptional circumstances now. So um, uh, currently the uh, terms on which uh, the on which Britain will leave the European Union are still under negotiation um, but from from what we already know uh, the EU migrants uh, are supposed to apply for a new migration status, uh, that is uh, that is 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 is, is um, planned in the uh, EU withdrawal agreement, and this uh, in the case of Britain, the new migration status for EU migrants living here and their family members, and also new migration status that applies not only for EU uh, EU uh, citizens but also citizens of European Economic Area and Switzerland. Those two, those are two new statuses. Uh, we are talking about pre-settled status, and we are talking about settled status. So pre-settled status is the equivalent of the limited leave to remain. If you know anybody from uh, outside of the European Union who is a migrant in Britain, they may either have limited leave to remain, which is a uh, a residence permit for a, uh, a limited number of years or they might have uh, indefinite leave to remain. So uh, we have for the European Union citizens we will have presidential status as I already said and settled status. Presidential status is for uh, five years whereas settled status is indefinite. It's, 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 it's permanent. It doesn't mean that one cannot lose it. 
for uh, presidential status holders, you can lose it. Uh, one can use it. Uh, use it after uh, lose it. Sorry, after two years abroad from Britain. And uh, for set settled status holders, one can lose it after spending more than five years uh, away from Britain. Uh, so after the end of the transition period, the uh, freedom, European freedom of movement that permits uh, coming to Britain, uh, being able to work to Britain, to the EU citizens will end. Uh, in order to uh, stay in Britain, those EU migrants who already are here and those who will move uh, before 31st of December 2020, they will have to apply for the new status. And uh, those who will come after the end of transition period uh, will have to uh, either come with a family visa uh, if their uh, family members uh, meet the requirements, and those will be difficult because um, you may expect, for instance, fam uh, financial requirements, uh, or uh, they may come with uh, 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 on the basis of points-based system uh, that reward uh, knowledge of language that will be the necessary requirement, but also rewards uh, education in a given uh, field. And here we are talking about PhD degree uh, or uh, PhD degree in uh, uh, science that will give you uh, more points. Um, uh, the point-based system will also uh, reward uh, having a, a job secured in uh, a, a profession that is on job shortage list. But this is something that will be for the newcomers. Uh, those who are already in Britain and will move before the end of the transition period will apply for uh, this new residence uh, status um, and uh, those applications are um, are uh, are uh, um, processed by the Home Office. Uh, till now, we know that over three million uh, applications have been received by the Home Office. It's difficult to say how many people applied uh, because uh, because uh, sometimes those applications that the Home Office is talking about are reapplications of the people who didn't finish their applications decided to apply again or whose application was not successful or didn't secure the settled status but, but the more precarious pre-settled status so some of people decided to apply again with a new application that's why applications of some of the of, for instance one individual counts or two as two that's why it's very difficult to say, uh, to provide estimates, how many people really applied. And uh, the estimates about the number of EU migrants in Britain are that it's approximately 3 million and a half individuals.